Hey guys, Derek and Bella here from a guy, a girl, and a camper van. So in our last video, we showed you how we built our Hoogle Culture Mound. And if you haven't seen that video, you should probably watch it first because today we're going to show you how we finally put some plants in it and then covered the whole thing with mulch. Since we spent so much time and energy on the design and construction of our garden, we unfortunately left ourselves about two or three weeks late for actually planting. Which is actually the story of our lives. We're always <laughs> late. Ask anyone we know. That is true. <laughs> so instead of being able to put everything in by seed, which is our eventual goal for next year, uh, we instead had to go to a nursery and buy seedlings. Yeah, but we did manage to plant a few things by seed. And we'll show you. So we picked a bunch of stuff up and we brought it out to the garden and then we very strategically placed things in the ground. Not really at all. <laughs> Where does it go? <laughs> well, in, I don't know. In the earth. In the ground. All right, so are we doing tomatoes in this then? Yeah. Okay. So which ones are the tomatoes? <laughs> so there were some things that we planted that said space about five inches apart. And um, yeah, they were just so tiny. I thought, why do they need that much room? <laughs> so it is true a lot of the times that whenever a plant requires a foot or two spacing in between the rows, the reason for that is actually uh, the ease of use for the gardener to make it easier to get in there and harvest it. A lot of plants don't need anywhere near as much room as we typically give them. That said, I think there's probably a few plants that we planted a little bit closer together than we likely should have. Yeah, you'll probably see as the things start to grow. So some of the plants came in what they call peat pots. Uh, basically the pot itself instead of being made out of like plastic or something like that it's actually a biodegradable compostable material. So you just pull off the plastic wrapper and then you soak them with water. So for that we needed scissors and then the hose. So after we finished planting all of our seedlings we made a small little trench with our finger and with a stick and we sprinkled in some seeds from some romaine lettuce, some spinach, some red leaf lettuce, some uh, Swiss chard and just other leafy greens. One of the awesome things about Hugel culture is that it's built on this rounded mound And so you've actually got some planting real estate on the side as well Once our tomato plants and other uh, the squash and other big big leafy things start growing eventually It'll smother out the side real estate But until then we should hopefully be able to get a full harvest of some of our lettuce and other leafy greens super excited. So after we finished planting we actually had quite a bit of room left over. Our garden was a lot bigger than we thought it was and so about a week later we finally made it back to another nursery and we picked up some more plants. Unfortunately the selection was pretty limited at that point uh, so we just grabbed whatever we could and we have a lot of tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> we have a lot of tomatoes yeah. Yeah. I think that's a cucumber. Yes, so we've yeah. got them a little out of order. Do you want to put the cucumbers down the center? Or do we should Well, we, we kind of need some room over there. Yeah, do, right? I don't think we should squeeze too much more in the center. All right, what if we go boom? Sure, whatever. For this first year, we clearly have no idea what we're doing. None. <laughs> no. <laughs> we might as well just plant a whole bunch of stuff, see what happens, learn from all of our obvious mistakes, and then do it better next year. That's so this is uh, late cabbage, this is early cabbage. So early comes first, late comes after. <laughs> yep, that makes sense. I went to university. <laughs> French sorrel. We don't even know what sorrel is. But it well, we'd be sorrel to not have it. Now put the tag beside it, just in case. Because <laughs> we'll forget what it is. Yeah. That might not have been as deep. I know one way to rectify that. Build up around it. 
<laughs> oh, we're going to get so many comments from farmers. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Telling us what we did wrong. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> Which is probably a good thing. Yeah, that's how we learn. That's right. So now we're not only two or three weeks late, we are now three or four weeks late. <sighs> yep. <laughs> So likely our harvest won't be as good this year as it will be in the future. Plus, because a hugel culture mound is typically built in the fall and then planted the following spring, instead of being built in the spring and then just planted right away like we did, <laughs> typically you don't really get a, a really good harvest until the year after you built it. The reason for that is because the wood needs a, a bit of a chance to decompose over the winter, release some of those nutrients, start absorbing water before things really get ready to start growing some food. So what we did is we actually took some of those rotten logs that we found in our forest and we put those on top of the dead wood hoping that that would help us actually get a crop this season but you never know. So between the fact that we started two or three or four weeks late <laughs> with our planting and also that our hugel culture mound really hasn't had a chance to you know season itself yet uh, our harvest this year may not be that great. I hope I get a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> but because we've got all this land, we figure, you know what, who cares? Let's just get whatever we can out of it. The, uh, whatever little bit of food we might be able to harvest this year is still better than nothing. And then by next year, hopefully, after a first year of growing, we should be able to get a really good harvest. And we likely made a whole pile of mistakes this year that we can learn from for next season as well. <laughs> likely? Definitely. Probably, definitely, <laughs> exactly. Now that everything is planted, we need to add some mulch. So luckily the previous owners of our property had cows and so they had a whole bunch of feed hay that was left over. Some of it had been left around for a few years and was composted and we used that in the inside of our garden when we built it. But there was also a pretty significant amount that was just really dried out from last year. And so that makes perfect mulch for the Hugo Culture Garden. I was a little nervous to use it initially because it had sat there for so long, which means there's probably a lot of bugs in it, and I'm not a bug fan. So I told Paula that now you're a farmer, so you better get used to bugs, which made complete sense and was perfectly fine until... Bees! bees. <laughs> So unfortunately, there was a whole bunch of bees that had started to build a little bit of a home on the underside of this pile of hay. And so as we were pulling hay from the top, it disturbed them on the bottom and they chased us away. Yeah. So I never laughed so hard, but I never moved so fast. <laughs> <laughs> so eventually I came back a little later with a big heavy sweater and some gloves and a bug net hat. And I didn't come back at all. <laughs> no, she stayed away. Yep. Thanks for the support. So once we had another <laughs> cartload of hay, we brought it back to the garden and it was time to spread it around. Mm -hmm. So there's a few reasons why we covered the garden in mulch. First of all, the mulch acts as a vapor barrier and it stops evaporation during the summer. So all of the moisture that's in the ground, whenever the sun beats down on it and it warms it up, it can't escape quite as easily. And so you don't need to water quite as often. The other reason is because in the winter, it helps to insulate the ground a little bit and keep it a little bit warmer so that you can start regrowing your plants a little bit earlier in the spring. The other reason is because the mulch itself contains a whole bunch of nutrients and over the winter they compost and add those nutrients back into your soil. Uh, all of this is part of what is often referred to as the Ruth Stout method and we'll probably talk a whole bunch about that in a future video. But for the time being one of the biggest advantages for us is that not only do we not have to water as often but we also don't have to weed as often or ever. Because all of this hay mulch actually smothers out all of the other weeds and plants and unwanted things that might try and compete with all of our vegetables. Which is actually a really good thing because we don't have time to weed <laughs> and with the water situation we're now in a well and this year in particular it, it's been pretty dry here so we need to be careful with our water. 
for our part of the world, this is considered to be pretty pretty drought-like conditions this year. Uh, we've had very little rain, and so the amount of watering that we would normally have to do in a typical garden would probably be far more than our well would be able to handle. And so luckily, this type of garden, we don't have to water all that much. So when we first looked into the Ruth Stout method of using hay as mulch on our garden, one of the things we were worried about is all of the seeds that are at the end of all of those pieces of hay. We thought if we're just gonna basically put all these seeds on our garden, aren't we gonna just be growing a whole bunch of hay on our garden? But as it turns out, as long as your hay's been sitting around for a season or so, uh, the sun dries it out and the birds and other animals typically pick out any of the seeds that are left. So you don't have to worry about that sort of thing. Um, I guess we're gonna be experimenting with that and we'll be able to tell you by the fall. <laughs> So stay tuned to see what happens with our garden. Because either we're going to end up growing a whole bunch of delicious vegetables. Or we're going to end up with a bunch of hay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're not. Peat pots. <laughs> Say that five times fast. Peat pot, peat pot. Peat pot, peat pot, peat pot, peat pot, peat pot. <laughs> not peat pot. Oh, yeah. And this year in particular has been really heavily droughted. Droughted? That's not a word. We'll make it a word. It's a word now. 